I'm Rebecca Virginia, and today I have some fun and brand new fall DIYs to share with you. And it looks like someone wants to say hi. My dog is always attached to my hip, so whenever I'm crafting or filming, he always has to figure out what mom is up to. So today is going to be my last fall video of 2022. Then next week, we're gonna get started into the Christmas crafts. I know it seems early, but all the stuff is already coming out in the stores. So to kick off our last video of the fall, we're going to be making this Farm Fresh Pumpkins sign. And I started off by using a wood sign that I got in a pack from a Walmart, but you could also use one of the wood round signs from the Dollar Tree. I had one of those, but because I wanted to stain this, I chose to go with the Walmart sign. I created this Farm Fresh Pick Your Own stencil. You could use the same one that I'm using, so I will have the link down below to not only the Canva version if you wanted to print it out, but also to the Design Space version. And for the pumpkins that are going in the center, I just used some wood letters. You could pick them up from Walmart. I know Dollar Tree even has them, Hobby Lobby, wherever you get your wood supplies. And I liked the wood finish, but to make it really pop against the board, I decided to paint them all white. And I'm using my go-to sample white paint that I got from Home Depot for free. And I am at the very end of it. So I am going to have to make another trip or maybe raid my mom's garage. <laughs> I know she has some paint samples in there. Lastly, I am just grabbing my hot glue gun and hot gluing down all of the wood letters to the center of our sign. If you're planning on just leaning this sign against maybe a wall or something in your home decor, then you don't need to add on the tag, but I did actually end up hanging this on my front door. So I took some of my thicker jute, not quite nautical rope, but a little bit thicker than jute and added a loop onto the back so that I could easily hang my sign. Next up is a sweater pumpkin, but I actually did not use any fabric in this. This is a completely jute or twine craft. I did a couple of sweater pumpkins last year. I'll have them linked above in the upper right hand corner, but I hadn't done any this year and I felt like I needed to. So I kind of made a faux sweater pumpkin using the jute. So I'm taking one of these wire tinsel covered pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And of course, being me, I'm saving that tinsel because you never know when you can use it again. And underneath you have this really nice plastic base or plastic form of a pumpkin. Next, I am just taking my jute and going all the way around the pumpkin. This is really easy, but it does take a good chunk of time. So definitely put on your favorite YouTuber, maybe another Rebecca Virginia DIY video and cover your pumpkin form in all of this jute. Then once it is all covered, we are going to create some braids. So for this, I am creating, I did nine pieces of jute and tied them together at the top. And then I'm going to braid three, three, and three. So just like you would do a normal braid, but instead of just taking one strand, you are going to have three. This is just going to create that thicker braid for us to use. I believe I ended up using three or four of these and I just braided them all the way down and then using some hot glue, I am attaching this to our jute pumpkin. I think the braid really gives it that sweater effect and it kind of makes it look more like it's fabric than just some twine. To finish off the top area of the stem of our pumpkin, I did take a little bit of a different colored twine and it's a little bit thicker, more between like a nautical rope and a jute. And I am wrapping that around the top of our pumpkin. And I also wanted to make a bow. So I created that using the same material and hot glued that to the base of the pumpkin stem. Lastly, I took a couple of leaves. I couldn't decide if I wanted to have some bright orange or red as a good contrasting color, but I was really feeling the neutrals with this DIY. So I picked a darker green and brown leaf to just stick underneath of our bow.
The next DIY is bringing me back to my elementary school days. I remember using the bright colored beads in I think it was third grade to make beaded corn for Thanksgiving. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you have done this craft or maybe your kids have. It's a really fun one to do with kids, so I highly suggest if you have them to create this with them. All that you are going to do is I took three of these pipe cleaners and folded them in half. Sorry, four. Four of the pipe cleaners and folded them in half so that we essentially have created eight pipe cleaners. And I just wrapped them around one another to kind of make this star-ish kind of symbol. And then I am using wood beads from the Dollar Tree. They came out with them for the fall season, a really nice long strand of wood beads. And I am just piling those onto the pipe cleaners. I believe I ended up doing eight or nine beads on each pipe cleaner, but depending on which kind of, you know, chenilles or pipe cleaner that you have will determine how many beads that you will use. Then once I had filled the pipe cleaners with all the beads, I just pulled them all up together and you can really see the corn start to take shape. And then I just twisted all of the pipe cleaners at the top to secure it and make sure none of those beads were going to be falling off. You can paint this whatever color you want, do a gradient so it looks like candy corn, do some darker reds and burgundies for maybe more of a Thanksgiving look. I went very traditional and just painted mine using some lighter yellow paint. And now to give my corn our fake husk, I am hot gluing this to the top of our corn. I love the way that this material really looked exactly like a corn husk. And lastly, to kind of give it a little bit more of a farmhouse touch, very perfectly named. This is called Farmhouse Ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I hot glued this to the base of our corn and the top of our husk. This next DIY is super easy and really just a way for me to show you how you can upgrade a dollar item by just adding a small touch. So for this, I got this pot holder from the dollar section of Target and I loved this pattern that I had created. Again, that is going to be linked down below in the description box if you wanna use it. I used it on the wood round, which was the first DIY in this video, and I wanted to use it again, especially to be displayed in my kitchen. So I used some heat transfer vinyl to adhere this down onto our pot holder, and I love that for only a dollar and some vinyl I already had, I could create a cute fall decor piece. So I know that I said this was a fall video and not a Halloween video, but I was obsessed with this little outdoor ghost piece that I made and I just had to share it with all of you. I have seen this kind of going viral on TikTok and Instagram using a tomato cage and a styrofoam ball, but I wanted to use some items that I already had, particularly Dollar Tree ones, and that's how I created this ghost. So I picked up this almost Christmas tree looking design from the Dollar Tree. And I also got these orange lights from the Dollar Tree. I'm wrapping them all the way around this, I'm not even sure what you call it, cone Christmas tree looking thing. I found it in the garden section and I'm wrapping the orange lights all the way around. And because this is gonna go outside and it might be windy or in the elements, I am using zip ties to hold in place my lights. But I think that if you use this inside, maybe put it by your front door or a fireplace, then you wouldn't need the zip ties. I was just being extra cautious in case I had some bad thunderstorms or windy weather. So once I have attached the lights to the cage, calling it a cage because it kind of reminds me of the tomato cage. Um, I am moving on to the next step. I created this skull for my Halloween video, but I have so much decor in my house. I didn't really have anywhere to display this. So instead of going out and buying a styrofoam ball to be my ghost head, I am just placing the skull on the top of this Christmas tree cage thing. Then I am covering it with a black creepy cloth and then again with some white creepy cloth to give us that ghost color. 
Lastly, I cut out some circles for my ghost eyes and for my ghost mouth. Since I was using this outside on my front porch to just weigh down my ghost a little and really make sure that he doesn't blow away or anything, I did take some rocks that I found in the backyard and place that around the cage just to weigh it down and make sure that it didn't fall over. I absolutely love the way this looks at night. I am so excited for all of the trick-or-treaters to see this on Halloween. Also, check out my dog in the background of these photos. He's peeking through the window. It's so funny. <laughs> I completely forgot to hit record when I was making this front porch sign, but I did want to show you all the finished creation. I'm going to have the Hello Pumpkin SVG down below for you to use in design space, as well as the Canva link in case you wanted to create it. I've had this pumpkin sign from the Dollar Tree for a year now and wasn't sure what to do with it. So I hope that this can give you an idea if you also have this sign and weren't sure what to make. This year, the Dollar Tree came out with these, well, what they marketed as hanging signs. They were really cute. There was a cherry pie one, and then there was also this pumpkin one that said, give thanks. But I was a little confused how exactly to use it. It has a little hanging piece of jute on the back, but I didn't know what I would actually hang these from, so they kind of have just been sitting in my craft stash. Then I decided that I would just make some standing decor out of these. So I'm taking one of the tumbling tower blocks, a lot like a Jenga block, which is from the children's toy section of the Dollar Tree, and just hot gluing this on to the back of our sign. It kind of creates a little kickstand for it. And I was experimenting with where I liked it best. I thought it was cute on the dining room table, but settled with putting it on my mantle. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.